It's going to be pizza, right? So I look at the probability of a data point in M, region M belonging to class K, which is PMK, right? Uh, not talking politics, uh, but uh, so you estimate that by just look counting the number of data points of class K in region M and dividing it by the total number of data points. Right? That's fairly straightforward. This is how I do the prediction, right? So, what about how do I grow a tree to do classification? It's exactly the same as this except that I do not use squared error, right. Can I use squared error? Why not? You would not want to because like one one is not Exactly. So, it depends on how I encode it, right. I mean uh, earlier in the linear regression we were kind of faking it by encoding it as uh, indicator variables or whatever, right. So, here I am going to have actual outputs, right. I can still look at the distance of the uh, prediction vector to the indicator variable vector, right, and try to do that, right. I can still do that, but there are better ways of doing it, right. So, the first thing I can use is the misclassification error So, I will denote by k of m the class label that I will I am going to assign to the entire region m, right. Just like we did the c hat m as the, the response that I am going to assign for the entire region uh, m. So, k of m is the, the class label I am going to assign for the entire region m, okay. That just is the arc max of this, okay. So, now the misclassification error is I am going to count all the data points in Rm which do not have k of m as their label, right. That is a misclassification, right. So, all those data points, the label I will be outputting is k of m, right. For all the data points in Rm, I will be outputting k of m as the label. So, all the data points in Rm which do not really have k of m as their label are misclassified, right. And divide by the total number of data points, that gives me the average misclassification error, okay. Is there some way to simplify this? One minus PM PM K of M, right? So because the fraction of data points that will be correctly classified are PM K of M, right? Because the true label is K of M, I am outputting K of M, they'll be correctly classified, right? So the fraction that will be misclassified is one minus. PMK of M. Okay, so that's a misclassification error. So how do I use this? Essentially, I plug it in here. Right? Find the split point and splitting variable such that the misclassification error in each of the regions is minimized. Right? The sum of the misclassification error in each of the regions is minimized. So remember that this has a very specific uh, solution for minimizing. So you don't really have to do this minimization. It's a fixed process. Right. As soon as you find the region, you just take the most abundant class in that region and set that as the class label for the entire region. Okay. Right? Is it clear how we do the how we use the misclassification error? 
Great. So, the next thing we would like to look at is So, one of the downsides of not being able to say anything very um, theoretically formal about decision trees is that it leads to dogmas. Okay. So, there are two camps of people who are very sure that this is the right way to do decision trees, right? they, they just keep fighting each other right? and uh, there are two very, very popular uh, uh, measures for doing classification using decision trees. Okay. So, the first one is called the Gini index. Okay. So, the Gini index uh, was actually originally proposed by economists to look at disparity of wealth. Right. So, let us look at uh, the wealth distribution in a population. Okay. So, are there more rich people than poor people or there are lot more poorer people than rich people. I mean, how does the disparity of the distribution of wealth? Okay. That is essentially they introduce that. So, in, in that in some sense you can roughly see that right here. So, are there more class 1 data points than class 2 data points or anything else? Suppose, I have k classes. Okay. In this particular uh, region are there more lot more class 1 data points than 2 to k. Okay. If I am able to split my regions like that, then I am doing something good right? because I can then output the class label as 1 and I will have less error. So, if I am able to split regions such that the class distribution is actually skewed within that region, then I am doing something good. Right? If the class distribution is uniform within that region, then I am doing something bad, right? because that is not a good region, because whatever class label I output, I am going to have a lot of error. But if the class distribution is skewed in favor of one class over the other, then I can output that class. In fact, the ideal leaf would be so skewed that there is only one class present. Correct. So, the skewness measure is what I have to look for and the more skewed the data is the better. So, the Gini index is actually more popularly given by this form. So, I do this for each region. So, this is for a single region, I do this for all regions. So, the other popular measure is cross entropy or deviance, but it is more popularly known by other name, I will give it to you in a minute. right? And this is given by this expression, this looks familiar to you guys? Shannon's entropy kind of thing, right? so it is cross entropy, where is the cross part? Right? You have p hat m k and you have p hat m k there, so why do they call it cross entropy? Okay. It turns out that that 
they, they, that's the, the true output label distribution that you have right from the data that is given to you right and this is what you do for estimating this is the estimated label distribution and since you are using an unbiased estimator for the probabilities you end up actually estimating the true probabilities. So, that is why it is called cross cross entropy this, this is supposed to be the that is the estimated okay. and since you are uh, anyway just counting the number of labels of each class and then dividing it and doing this. So, it is essentially end up with the same thing ok. So, the first one is the output label distribution this is the estimated one and uh, so you essentially end up with the same thing right. So, another way of thinking about it is ok. So, if you look at the prevalence of the labels in the data and I give you 100 data points right essentially if I am going to randomly pick a data point and look at the label right. So, this is the probability of seeing label k correct right. So, going back to your uh, ideas of uh, Shannon's uh, uh, entropy. So, if I have if I have a sequence of 100 things right I mean I have k possible symbols that can occur right and this gives me the number of bits I need to encode these k symbols given the relative frequency of those symbols right. If I had not done the splitting right if I had not split into m regions right if I had kept the data as a whole I would have required some number of bits to encode the output label that makes sense. See suppose let us look at it this way. So, I have my data so there are 400 data points of each class ok I will require some amount of bits to encode this right half half the entropy is I mean I mean the probability is half and half I will need some amount of thing to encode this. Suppose I split it up so that I get uh, I get two regions one gives me 400 and 150 other gives me 0 and 250 right. So, how many bits do I need to encode the output variable here? None right all is a big improvement I do not need any bits for encoding the variable here and here I will need some but that certainly be less than this because we know half half is the worst case right. So, in, in terms of the number of bits that I need for specifying the label I have some improvement when I do the split when I go from 400 400 when I go from there and I get these two splits the number of bits I need has come down right. So, I have gained some information by doing the split right. So, how much information have I gained? Sorry right. So, the original entropy minus this quantity right. So, original entropy minus this quantity gives me the amount of information I have gained right. So, sometimes this is also known as the information gain criteria because of that. Right. So, either you you minimize the cross entropy or you maximize the information gain right. So, information gain is essentially some constant minus this. So, that is information gain therefore, you maximize the information gain or minimize the entropy. So, again the process is very simple you for every feature j you try to find a split point s such that this or this is optimized right one of these three things, but the most popular are actually the Gini index and the cross entropy. So, one thing I want to point out 
So when you are splitting this into two things, right, and then I have to find out the overall uh, cross entropy or deviance, right. So what I need to do is, so the entropy of this will be weighted by 250. The entropy of this will be weighted by 550 divided by 800, right? Both of these cases. So I'll have to have some kind of weighted combination of the score or the Gini index, whatever it is, right? I have to have a weighted combination of the Gini index of the individual partitions or the deviance of the individual partitions. So I have to be careful about that. Just don't add them up. Okay? You have to use the weighted combination. So for this, it is fine because it is. Uh, per region, yeah. So again, you have to be, you have to make sure you are uh, combining it appropriately, right? Yeah. Because there's only one output will come, right? Only one symbol is present. If there's only one symbol present. You don't need any bits to encode it because that's the only symbol that's present. Class 1 will not happen. So, so 400, 400 means class 1 there are 400 data points, class 2 there are 400 data points. 0, 250 means class 1 there are 0 data points, class 2 there are 250 data points. And the symbols I am talking about are the classes. Right here there will be no occurrence of class 1, only class 2 will occur. Okay. So, one uh, again one other uh, caveat, mm, if you are using this for classification you are doing cost complexity pruning. Right, uh, almost always you are supposed to use the misclassification error because that is eventually what you are trying to optimize. So you grow the tree with whatever error measure you want, but when you prune the tree, use the misclassification error because at the end of the day, I am going to evaluate you based on the misclassification error, not on the Gini index or information gain or anything. And these are, in some sense, they are relative measures. They are good for comparing one feature against the other, right? But the final performance measure is only misclassification error right so use that when you are doing the proning okay so i'll stop here